What's poppin' is your boy Mac Powers back with Ronski, aka Ronald Reagan, uh, head designer, uh, founder, CEO, Reagan Era, uh, another iconic fashion line, but also connected with uh, GXFR movement. Uh, half of the originators of that, along with West Side Gun, uh, and we were talking about the whole uh, Hitler. Hitler wears Hermes and uh, the imagery to shock people, to get people to think. And I heard Conway talk about people at record labels sort of had a problem wrapping their mind around this whole Hitler thing, uh, the Hitler wears Hermes, because we have a lot of Jewish brothers and sisters who are employed or, or either run record labels. Do you have any background on that, on how the labels felt about the whole concept? Um, I, you know what? From from what I got out of um, the Hitler one was it wasn't aimed at record labels per se. It was aimed at just your hand in hand, you know, as, as many people that you can get to get to latch on to it as possible to hear the music. Um, the Hitler on the cover and the whole concept of Hitler and Air is just a, a nod to the style of rap that, you know, West Side is, you know, fly, grimy together, you know. So that being on the cover also was the way so that nobody would judge him based off of just how he looked. So the objective was to use an art painting. It was actually a painting of Hitler, you know, on the cover of it so that someone would be intrigued enough to be like, well, that guy that gave, that guy that sold it to me is fly, but this is ill. Like, well, let me at least list, let me give it a listen. Whereas, you know, this is during that tip, that time, you know, when people ain't, when Slim Jewels and and, and, and and CDs, people trying to hand them to you and you like, nah, I'm straight, I'm good. You know, it's just an oversaturation of yeah. people I was making and handing out CDs. So it was like, it was an effort to, to make it where someone wouldn't just judge it by the cover, but also intrigued by the cover. Okay. But uh um, the Hitler II, doesn't have a picture of Hitler on it. It has a picture of West Side Gun on it. But you would never be able to tell if you just didn't know his grill, because that's the only thing that you can see as an identifying factor of who the person is. He has a ski mask on. But it's a Chanel ski mask, which made it like fly and grimy at the same time. He got a ski mask on, which automatically is some type of you know tool used in you know crimes. But it's Chanel on the top of it, so it's like super luxury at the same time. Right. So his face isn't doesn't appear on the album covers. No. What's the idea behind that? It's just you know, it's I think that it lends to uh, the mystery. It has the same type of connotation as an MF Doom with you know, wearing the mask or you don't see MF Doom that often, he's not in the light often, you know. Um, it's just his nod to having mystery about himself. I don't mean to cut you off. I literally did not plug my shit up. That's that goofy shit. You want, we got to do it all over? No, 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 no. We're going we gonna to keep it gully. Um, and you, you could go on and continue that story. Oh, okay, so yeah, like like I said, the Hitler, Hitler 2, cover um it is it, it just had him you know his face covered and then that just continued to be the mantra from that point forward anyways just to keep that level of mystery and that level of if there's no face is no case you know mm. maybe i can say a little bit more be a little bit more vocal a little bit more boisterous about what my experiences are if you can't really attach it to me. Got you. Okay, now we're getting into the science of uh, the Griselda movement and in particular, West Side Gun. It just seems like when you talk about a, a guy that hadn't made it yet, was, was trying to pass out these CDs, trying to keep his anonymity, trying to stand out from the crowd, a, I don't give a fuck attitude, chip on your shoulder, I'm from Buffalo, I'm down in Atlanta, I'm still repping 716, it's levels to this 
the way this man thinks and conceptualizes what he wants to put forward to the public. Can you add context to uh, West Side Gun's thinking? Um, w one thing I can say about this guy is, is he's very calculated. He's very confident. Um, he's a stand-up guy. He um, he deals in respect heavily in respect, but when he makes moves, it's with that heavy confidence that he doesn't believe that he can fail at anything. Wow. That he puts his mind, mind to. Not saying that, oh, I'm going to go lift the building because I want to. No, he, he plans his goals, he writes them out, he strategizes, and it, it's the same type of thought process that would make a person want to go back and look in the thesaurus for a word for a word to make it sound like a whole you know what i mean is that intellect and that uh amount of planning for uh the future is why things are so successful um he just plays chess he's the chess player he moves things around and it's all part of a plan and it, he doesn't allow outside influence to affect the plan. Nothing will stop the plan. So let me get this straight. He's, I'm bouncing around. I guess it don't matter how I bounce around, how we get to these answers, as long as we get to it and we push it out to the people. Again, this is a very important, I believe, interview for the culture. Uh, you're sitting here talking about West Side Gun. We're talking about Griselda, which I have said, and I don't know how anybody would be able to disagree that, Griselda's, Griselda is the most important movement in hip hop right now. So, and because Westside has put so much of an emphasis on fashion, it makes this whole conversation all the more relevant, especially since I'm talking to the guy that engineered the world famous iconic uh, GXFR logo. Again, on your screen, Ron Ski, better known as uh, Ronald Reagan, who was a designer in his own right with his own company. And so, Let's let's bounce around a little bit. At some point, West Side goes to what is it called? The Hip Hop Temple? Oh, the Temple of Hip Hop. Um I I'm not a spitter or you know, I, I didn't have any aspirations to be a rapper as nowhere close to these guys. But back in this time, I would say maybe ninety-nine, two thousand. Mm -hmm. Um KRS One started a, a, I would say a school, so to speak, and it was called the Temple of Hip Hop, and you know, um, people would go there and learn, you know, the ins and outs of the hip hop movement for one, but for two, um, also the do's and the don'ts as far as like uh, contracts and you know, the the whole shebang for lack of a better word so then for, for my young people that uh have starting to subscribe to this channel and when i start naming these names for krs one cuts you can um go ahead and pause it if you need to to write it down or rewind it whatever you need to do my philosophy <laughs> um this this guy called himself the teacher uh i'm still number one is one of his cut um the bridge is over all of these cuts, go look these cuts up if you don't know who KRS-One is. One of the original architects of hip-hop, one of the people that uh, made black people proud. Uh, he, he spit that knowledge, so it wasn't just all street grimy, but there was uh, some street essence to KRS-One, but he was known as that, that mastermind, uh, the knowledge bringer, the philosopher. Um, so for you young guys, go, go check that out. And so he went to the temple, uh, the hip-hop temple, the temple of hip-hop, and this was a brick and mortar place. It's actually a building, right? No, this is an actual building. I remember, you know, uh, West Side telling me, you know, like we might be at, at my house chilling or, you know, somewhere. Oh, man, I'm getting ready to go to the Temple of Hip Hop. Like, you know, this is multiple occasions, you know, over a course of a long period of time. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if the hopes was to like maybe like get a record deal out of it or something at the end or something like that. I just know that he was dedicated to it. Okay. And then uh, I, I get into battles with individuals in my comment section, not a lot of them. And you know, I respect people's opinion. It's first amendment. 
Um, but I hear from people, I don't like West Side Gun's voice. His voice is annoying. Um, I wish he would quit the ad-libs. For, for me, and I'm going to say this again because I've said it before, every single ad-lib that's dropped on the Pray for Paris album has a purpose. Every single fucking ad, it's not just a dude, let me go in the booth and go, do, do, do. It's not, not, that's not what it is. Listen to Pray for Paris and watch how the ad libs hit like fucking instruments. They hit like snares. Um, and so does he intake any of that criticism? Does he take that to heart? Is this something that he's lived with for a long time? People didn't understand that or talk to me about that. For, for, for all those who want to understand, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to play. It. This is a very simple way of putting what your negative comments or whatever you, however you feel about what side gun. I'm going to put, I'm going to put it to you plain and simple. He don't hear nothing that you saying. It doesn't affect anything that he's going to do in the future. <laughs> and there's nothing that nobody. And this is in uh, West. This is Benny and Conway and anyone else included. There's no one that can steer that train other than West Side Gun. And that's it. And he does not hear what you're saying. And he really thinks that he's the illest in the world. Like, he's literally that confident. And I'm not saying he, he's going to sit up here and say that he's the best spitter in the world. But when he gets on the, the court, he scores 50 every game. No doubt. Hating on him is not going to make any difference. You could turn the hate volume up if you want to. It's still not going to steer him and keep him from doing what he want to do. And he might be doing ad-libs right now. Next year, he might be singing. It's because he he does what he wants to do. If you want to hear some of the old West Side Gun music, listen to Hitler where Air, Air Maze won, and there's no ad-libs. Zero. Mm. Mm. Now, talk to me about that because I know I, you got with me in the comment section on this video. Let's, okay, let's, I'm bouncing around. The video that ended up getting a, a ton of views on this channel happened to be a video where West Side Gun says something about Funk Master Flex. And the quote was, and it's on video, I'm not putting nobody on blast. I think he was talking to Rosenberg. He felt like uh, Griselda wasn't getting that love when he went in there and did that freestyle. And, he said on camera, fuck Flex. What the fuck he going to do? Nigga ain't going to do shit. Can you talk to me about West Side Gun when a lot of up-and-coming MCs and rappers would look at Flex as a kingmaker and wouldn't dare say something like that out loud with that much confidence. But he says, fuck Flex and don't give a, give a fuck about it. Talk to me about that, that mentality. Um, Because he really don't care about Flex. I, I don't think that he... Like he he understands Flex's platform, and that's maybe why he was there. But anything that he does is a chess move. So it it is it, it's not to 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 big up the person that's in the on the platform more so than it is to be a move for the whole plan that he's written out. So regardless of anything i like i told you before his moves are very calculated mm -hmm. he's very confident mm -hmm. but he moves on respect and as long as you respect him and as long as you stay in the line of respect and he's going to give you respect back now if you watch the the uh the way that uh what's his name funk, funk master flex responded to the craziest stuff that these guys are saying in a freestyle you know, it's very dry and drab, whereas, you know, he's generally hype about stuff that's weak. I'm talking about on a scale of one to ten, he's like hype over fours and, and fives. Somebody and, was talking to me know, about a Chris Brown freestyle where he went, I never saw it, but somebody told me it was a Chris Brown freestyle and he went ape shit. I didn't yeah, see it. I mean, and, I, and, I, and not to down Chris Brown, like Chris brown got talent up the, you know, like he's fly, like super he like the Michael Jackson of our time. You took the words right out of my mouth, bro. Yeah, so not to take nothing from Chris Brown, but right. these guys are spitting some real live hip hop, real live bars, and it's like very vivid. The uh, the picture.
pictures that these guys are painting in these raps that they talking about it's so vivid and so uh you can't mistake what they saying like you can almost see the the visual to their rap coming out of the you know why they why they saying you paint the picture and, and it's, it's, yeah so by them to be painting these pictures and then for flex to be unmoved by such elaborate pictures it was like you dissing the art which dissing is short for disrespect which got him what he got but flex and, and I, this, I'm this is coming this is coming from the horse's mouth this ain't from some ancillary figure that's outside the camp this is west side gun's brother right so and we talk about we know they didn't come from the same mother and father but they've been down for so long with each other. They came up in this game together. He describes West Side Gun as his brother. And West Side Gun, if you ask him face to face, is going to say that Ron Reagan, Ron Ski, is his brother. So this is coming from inside the camp. And as we talk about respect and disrespect, and we look at how vivid and how real, this is the other thing that really gets me about Griselda. So I'll go back to 5 to 50. Uh, another song like Did I by, by Benny. You paint these pictures. When he, he talks about on 5 to 50, asks, Earl Howard, if you think I'm fronting about that 20, 20 grand a day. Um, it looked like the video was shot on Montana Ave. Uh, we, uh, a lot of videos, early videos from Griselda, looked like they were shot in Buffalo. It's, it's the realism factor. I, when I listen to them, when I look at the videos, I just believe kind of every word of it. So to that point, these Buffalo kids, you talk about disrespect, you talk about Funk Master Flex, you talk about people that talk greasy on the internet. I know that um, the, the snitch just got out the joint not too long ago. Uh, I call him Snitch Nine or, or the Latin Leprechaun, whatever you want to call him. Um, that's my nickname. And I know he, he liked to troll. He'd been doing a lot of that. It looked like Snoop fell into the trap, got involved with him. And then he said something greasy about Snoop. I got no disrespect to Uncle Snoop. Do you? He's a legend. He's an icon, been around a long time. Um, but now you got Takashi talking greasy about Snoop, where in my estimation, I don't know how um, that's supposed to fly. I just want to ask you, because Griselda is, is such a powerful, important, and popular mo movement across the globe. If a guy like Takashi specifically were, let's say, to go on Instagram or something like that and talk greasy about West Side Gun, would, what would the reaction be from Griselda? Um, publicly, you probably wouldn't hear nothing. Um, now maybe a couple of days later, I could damn near guarantee you Takashi would be resending those uh, lyrics or comments, or it's gonna be some apologies uh, posted. So publicly, you'll if you see him this. Not too long after, publicly, you'll see him apologize. It's a reason why you don't see any rappers really out here in the light trying to diss them. Um, it's a guy from um, he had a he had a song on the soundtrack of Grand Theft Auto. I think mm -hmm. his name is aguilar or something like oh, that. oh my god max stacks was talking to me yesterday my dude max stacks global hip-hop correspondent out of norway was talking to me about uh aguilar and he said there was something that was said oh so you saw so if if you do do the knowledge or you know go and look up on your own you'll see the same exact thing you'll see somebody making some type of disrespectful move or talk about griselda or west side or whoever and then you see them Days later, come back and say, you know what? I'm sorry. I apologize. Got you. Loud and clear. And we're not, let's be clear. And this is me. This is my platform. My man, Ronsky, he don't got to say nothing. This is my platform. We're not promoting violence. We're not promoting beef. We want everybody to make it. We want you snitches. Fuck you. We all, that's what we on with here. But everybody else, it's, it's all love. It's all peace. As a people, we're going through a lot right now. And we don't want to incite nothing, obviously. But it's, we all know what it is. If you're from any hood in America, if you've ever been down for any period of time, disrespect is a no-no. So as long as we got that on the record, I'm pretty sure West Side has put this on the record uh, plenty of times, uh, Griselda's not going to tolerate that disrespect, and we're just going to leave it at that. There's no reason to even disrespect these cats. Um, yeah, let's talk about... be a bad move. Yeah, labels... He just said it would be a bad move. I agree. Labels... 
20 years, um, it's the, the, these guys is working, trying to get into the industry. They must have went through different kind of uh, label situations, right? Um, I mean, yeah. I, see, Westside didn't, though. Westside didn't. Westside always wanted his own imprint, more so than being an imprint on anyone else's uh, platform or you know, he just, I, I think that ultimately he kind of feels like uh, that uh, chasing of the the industry dollar and, uh, you know, kind of like I'll do anything for it type of mentality is a, a low mentality. You know what I mean? Like, just be you and then they will come to you if you... Uh, uh, a product that can, you know, help the the culture as well as, you know, something that's marketable, sellable, you know, and just build your, he wanted to just build his own ship. He didn't want to ride on someone else's. Now the, the other, the other guys in the group, they are more rapper than they are a mogul or business uh, person. Whereas Westside is, you know, probably equally half and half businessman artists. So the other guys out of the group, because they're very, very, very strong in the rap side of it, then they kind of do need, you know, the 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 um, connections and all that stuff that come along with, you know, having an imprint or a, a, a company behind you to move your uh, product, so to speak. So doing my research, I I came across the information that at some point was it you was signed to BMF or was it you and Westside was was somehow rocking with BMF? Uh, well, no, 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 no. Uh, BMF, I got my connection in the whole fashion industry out of college through a connection in in BMF. Um, okay, I I. I there's a guy named DJ Blue who used to be the um, mascot for the Atlanta Falcons. The guy who you remember that that Dirty Bird Dirty dance Bird, that they yeah. used to do all of the time. Yeah. He's the one who invented that dance. He's you know a real icon like that. Okay, um, Atlanta City icon. He introduced me to Big Meech's bodyguard, and when he introduced me to Big Meech's bodyguard, I showed him you know clothing and stuff that I was making and hustling at the time. And then he said, "You, I want to introduce you to my boss. Me not knowing who his boss was, you know, he just told me to come to Justin's at like 10 o'clock. You know, I come to Justin's, he meet me out front. And then he introduced me to Big Meech. And I, I didn't know anything about Black Mafia family or anything that was going on about their movement. I'm just a young guy in college, you know. So I see this guy, he's like extraordinarily rich, you know, like. Just more money than you can imagine. How about that? Mm, okay. So, um, you know, he's a real nice guy. We He's from Michigan, too. He's from Detroit. You know, we talk for a little while. I tell him what I'm trying to do. And then he just, you know, kind of just scooped me up under his wing and just have me making clothes for the whole BMF crew. Now, um, that's how I got my introduction, introduction into the clothing thing. Now, there were people in that same um, light back then that were you know of course attached to that movement that had like music contracts and you know uh they were making music and stuff you know bmf records and stuff like that so there was a guy that i met that was attached to sony his name was Saddam. um i knew him through you know clothes and all that stuff and i told him hey i got a friend that raps you know i want you to i want to introduce you to him you know i know you got this deal with with sony you know that it might be a good look for you to you know because my friend is, is fired you know and um you know one thing led to another i introduced them and they they heard you know they heard what i had to say they really thought that he was talented um you know it just was it i would say it wasn't the the best time for the type of artist that he is as far as the type of music you know and you, I, I would, I would also say it's some people just like that even now. It's people, it's still non-believers of what's going on as far as their style of rap now. So 
I'm not saying that 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 mentality has faded. It was just a long, a lot stronger back then because you had, you know, uh, lean with it, rock with it, and uh, white tea, and uh, you know, uh, laffy taffy, and you know, you a, a soldier boy, you know, like you 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 had that as like the new thing. Like this is where music has gotten us. Like you know. And, and more or less looking at the style of rap that Westside has as like, oh, that's that's last year or that's kind of archaic or, you know, we we not that's not going to sell anymore. We we sold we sold all of that out. You know what I mean? That type of attitude. Yeah. So and then we're going to come back with like a part three right after this because we doing so much right now. I, de I definitely appreciate the conversation. We got Ron Ski in the building, Reagan era. Uh, can you shout your IG out real quick in case people want to start following you? Oh, people that want to follow me on the Instagram, um, it's very simple. L E three six five. Just simple. L E, -E, -E stands for limited edition because that's what you expert at. You do the one offs oh, yeah. and the exclusive shit and everybody can't touch it. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you the type of person that care about um having something exclusive if you're the type of person that care about um you know standing out in a crowd um then i'm the guy to come holler at as far as truly exclusive truly top quality um you know unique one-of-a-kind clothing got you back what's popping is your boy mike powers back with ronski aka uh ronald reagan Reagan era fashion, the mastermind behind the iconic uh, GXFR logo. Uh, very good friends, some would say brothers uh, with West Side Gun, very close to that Griselda family. I want to transition into uh, some things that I don't know, maybe you do or maybe you don't have information or background about the, the Mock Homie situation. I, I was surprised because I just got on Mock Homie not too long ago, but I was surprised to learn that at one point he was actually down with uh, Griselda had had West Side Gun signed Mock Homie. Do you know anything about that? Um, I met Mock Homie two times. Mm. Um, this was during the early building of um, Fly God. This is when we when you you have the the Fly God being recorded. Yeah. So uh, you know I'm taking a break. You know in the middle of the day oh what's going on bro where you at oh i'm at the studio i pull up to the studio and this guy's there and he's like oh this is my man my Tommy. he is spitter but he also a, a videographer he shoot he shoots videos and stuff so i'm like oh okay so when i met my Tommy, he had a camera not a mic wow um and I, he's all right uh, I'm not a real, I'm not a fan, but he's all right. He can spit. I don't know if, if Westside planned on keeping him as a part of the Griselda movement. Um, I just know that it was a, a the Mock Hami guy, and it was another guy back then uh, named G Five, and they're both you know real good, real you know they got talent. I'm, yeah. I'm just not a fan of it. You know, that's I got you. Now, I meet mean, myself. Uh, Full disclosure, I'm a big fan of Mark Um I, I think his voice is very important to the movement. That's just people got different tastes, but um, you you know that's just me. And I, you talk about all of these things, and I and I just, you know, I want to go to the point where there is a buildup to this Griselda blowing up because you got these guys struggling to get their voices heard. Um, I know that Benny talked about he had done some time before. I know Wes had talked about he he did time. I think Conway was down for a minute. I, I need you to weave together this story of of how we came from uh, these Buffalo kids to having nothing to all of a sudden people make and I believe Fly Guy was the thing that kind of jumped everything off. But can you can you walk me through the lineage of how this all took place? I mean, including you know Conway was in the hospital for a minute. Can we talk about that? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that people probably know bits and pieces. I, I'll try to make, make bullets, um, count. It was like this. Benny stayed in Buffalo. Benny 
rhymed with that same imprint that they were all on together for the you know entire length of time now he did some time he went to prison got out and you know they always were in and out of you know situations mm -hmm. you know so sometimes it'll be longer sometimes it'll be shorter but meanwhile benny always rapped the whole time it was never really no hiatus aside from the time spent in incarcerated uh -huh. so um conway kind of wanted to do his own thing you know he wanted to be a part of the group the collective never broke up se gang still together so you can't really say that they broke up right. but during the during the time where they're trying to make their little solo moves benny stayed with the buff city imprint and they put more steam behind Benny because they felt like his work work ethic was stronger than Conway. You know, like Conway might not show up to something or, he, you know, he had a lot more stuff going on than Benny as well. So, you know, it was, it was a little bit different. Now, Westside during this whole time, he didn't want to rap. He, he thought that it was corny because of all, everything that was out and everything that was moving, everything that was being trendy. He thought that that stuff was weak, and he just did. He he saw it as the wrong temperature to want to, you know, rap in. Now Conway and Benny didn't necessarily feel that way. They wanted to continue rapping, and they felt like they could switch to South Paul, or you know, they could rap on South Beach, or you know, they could rhyme on whatever. You know, they had the attitude like how Fat Joe was saying, just switch to left, and you will be all right. You know, so um, that is why they stayed at it now fast forward you know you got west side wanting to manage conway because every the other side of things was managing benny's situation so benny's still dropping mixtapes benny's still you know out in the buffalo light at the very least you know so conway being his brother you know he he saw the whole you know well my my brother is lanes like all i got to do is just put him in the right light and he's gonna get on mm -hmm. and it was the it was the right mindset it was just you know once he got shot and then you know well let me go back further machine gun black got got killed first rest in peace rest um, in peace yeah rest in peace on cello um yeah Machine Gun got shot or got killed, and then you know, of course, him and Westside is real tight, so that you know messed Westside up a little bit, like really made it like I'm not forget this music shit. So then you know, like I said, fast forward, Conway still being ill, Conway still wanting to do it, Westside like, all right, I'll just manage him, and then you know, I'll make a deal where you know it'll work for both of us, you know. Um, then Conway gets shot, and then now who are you to manage? Can you back up just for a second? I know it's some backstory. I'm not sure if you feel comfortable talking about the events that led up to uh, Conway the Machine uh, being shot. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, you said about Conway being shot? Yeah, because there was a specific um, situation that took place. Um, The situation, from what I know, from the, 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 the way I hear it, um, and this is, you know, firsthand through the people that's telling me the story I'm involved. Um, I think it was a situation where they was, they went to a club and one of the guys out of their crew, which is, um, you know, well off, um, you know, he was stunting, you know, maybe throwing money or, you know, something like that. Or, you know, I make clothes for him too, so he's fly. Of course, you know, he's wearing something that's extraordinarily expensive, or, you know, just whatever. Um, I guess someone that was at that party or club, nightclub, um, was hating or mad or felt insulted or felt like this is my birthday, you know. Um, who are y'all to be, you know, throwing money and making my, you know, making all of the attention that's supposed to be me on me at my birthday? Uh, on y'all you know what i mean one of those type of hating type of situations and i think that they they really didn't like this guy you know they just he's just a local guy that's you know real popular and 
you know, they just, it was just Hayden. So, you know, once they, once they left and went back to the house or wh- wherever they were staying at that night, um, I think that the guy shot the truck up that, that um, they were riding in thinking that um, this guy, the, the other guy was driving, but it wasn't. It was Conway that was driving, still in the front seat. I think he might have, from what I remember, he wasn't even, um, like, not 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 unconscious, but, like, drunk or, you know, how, how you just might pull up and you ha happy that you made it home, so you just kind of relax, right? Yeah. Car still running and everything, you know? So that that was what that was about from what, you know, from the, the, the way that I hear. Is this Atlanta or Buffalo this happened? This is in Buffalo. Okay, in, 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 in the 716.